Hi, welcome to the workshop for what is going to be quite an unusual build for me. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I generally build scratch built guitars quite often from reclaimed timber from one source or another. But one of the main things I'm trying to achieve with this channel is to make the hobby of guitar building a little bit more accessible. So hopefully the videos I make do help people achieve the goal of building their own guitar. But I wanted to see if I could strip it back and make the process as user friendly and easy as humanly possible. Now to do that it became apparent that I was going to have to do a kit build. Now I've never built a kit before. I've always built my own stuff from scratch so this is going to be a new experience for me and hopefully this will also be the catalyst for people who've never built anything before to get on the journey and into the hobby of guitar building. Okay so let's get down on the bench and have a look and see what I've got. And what we've got is a kit by Harley Benton. Now I've chosen this kit for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, it was very reasonably priced at £90. And secondly, I've heard some good things about Harley Benton, both as a brand and the guitars that they build, but also about the kits that they sell as well. So the kit came really well packaged. There was a, a very large outer box that was full of padding and stuffing. And then this smaller box was inside. And in this smaller box, we have a couple of instruction books, um, one in English, one in German, and three smaller boxes with what I presume are the body, the neck, and all the components in. Now there's a little bit of damage on this inner box which is a little bit worrying especially because it's on one of the horns because this is what they call their DC which is their SG type kit so let's have a look at the body first up there's no damage. So it was just superficial damage to the box, which is great. Okay. In terms of the timber used, um, it looks like some kind of mahogany. It is quite light. I like how light it is. It is an SG, so it is quite thin, so it will be. Um, the routing is relatively clean. It's not too bad, um, but it's not brilliant. But it's all going to get covered up, so we're not massively bothered about that. But I'll bring you in for some closer shots in a bit. It is a little bit raggy in there. There's a little bit of a tear out where the hole's been drilled through for the output jack but it's nothing I can't fix other than that it looks nice I'm quite pleased with it actually it does look quite nice okay so the neck is made of maple um, And it looks very nice. It's quite a it's quite a slim profile. It's got a scarf joint here, which is great to see, because um, that means that this headstock transition isn't going to be quite so vulnerable. Um, the scarf joint is very nicely done. It's almost imperceptible. You can't feel it at all. You can barely see it. The glue joint is immaculate. So that's really, really good. Um, the neck is bound. The binding is nice. It's almost seamless again. Very, very happy with that. Binding on the top looks really nice. 
and all the inlays and everything on the top of the neck look great. So that's really, really positive. The fretboard is very dark. It looks as if it could be ebony. I don't think it is ebony. I think it's been dyed that color, um, but it looks good. We've got the crown inlays. Um, generally, they look nice. They're straight. They're pretty even in the gaps. The material looks pretty, mother of perloid. Um, and there doesn't seem to be a bunch of fill around them. So they've been, they've been done really nicely. So that's good. The nut is plastic and extremely cheap looking, but there had to be a downside somewhere. In terms of the fretting, do you know, that's not bad. That is quite good. I mean, it's, it's not to a, to a standard of someone who's spent hours and hours getting them perfect, but they look very nice and they feel okay. You're not, that wouldn't feel uncomfortable to play as it is. So that's really, really good. And that leaves us with the last box, which is all the bits. Let's see what we've got. So you even get an extremely cheap lead. I don't think that'll ever get used. Allen key for the truss rod is useful. Okay. Bits and pieces. So in here we have the bridge. So it's a tunematic style bridge in chrome. Looks nice. Yep, doesn't seem, any, doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that. Stop tail piece also in chrome. Yep, that's absolutely fine. Output jack socket plate, um, which of course is wrong for an SG, but there you go. Truss rod cover. Four speed knob style knobs. I quite like these actually. I've got them on a number of kind of SG and Les Paul Junior type guitars, so I'm not afraid of using those. And the poker chip with the rhythm and treble on. And some screws. Pit guard, which is three ply, black, white, black. Control cavity cover, which is just single ply black. Set of strings, not sure if I'll use those. Assorted fittings. Set of tuners. Neck plate, wiring harness with the switch and all of the wiring on here is via plugs. So there's no soldering at all involved in putting this thing together. And two humbucking pickups. Again, plug and play, black pickup rings, actually don't look too bad at all. All in all, I'm really happy with this kit. There are a couple of little bits that I need to sort out, but when you consider that the whole thing costs less than one decent quality pickup, I've got to say it's better than I ever thought it would be. Now I said at the beginning of this video that I was going to try and make this as an accessible project as I possibly could. Um, and to that end, I'm not going to use any of the fancy tools that I've got lying around my workshop. I'm not going to use any of my machinery. Um, I'm not going to do a load of fret work, etc. I'm just going to go with what came in the kit and see if we can get a usable instrument out of it. And to that end, 
I've decided that I'm only actually going to use one tool and it's a tool that most people will have lying around and that is a simple multi-tool. Now I think there's pretty much everything I need on this multi-tool to build this guitar. I'm going to keep this first video quite short and sweet but I'll be back very soon with the next instalment where I'll be preparing and applying the finish onto this guitar. So in the meantime, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, leave me a like if you found this useful, or just let me know in the comments whether you think I can actually complete this with just one tool. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks a lot for watching, bye bye.